Hello and welcome to Clady Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. And welcome to the Don't Wake the Dragon Interior Makes series. I keep calling this thing a tea dragon, the meal and the feast I've been referring to as afternoon tea. And what would afternoon tea be without something to drink that afternoon tea out of? In this video, I am going to be making a slip casting mold. This is going to be a three-part mold. I have made many molds in the past, but this is the first time I'm doing a multi-part mold. So, come on, let's do this. The dragon was conjured in my mind, inspired by a Viking song Valhalla's calling. In a morning walk, hearing that song, and I had this idea, this just this dragon popped into my head, and I thought I have to build a dragon. When I think of Vikings, I think of like how to train your dragon. You know, wooden barrels comes to mind and that whole this aesthetic of this weathered wood. That's where I drew the inspiration for the service wear set. So I wanted a mug that looked like a barrel. I picked this up a long time ago because I really loved them and I loved the barrel idea of it. And I was gonna make a mold out of this one, but I want the rugged barrel idea, but I feel like Evangeline's kind of this hybrid. She's got this sort of ruggedness, but she's got a soft side to her too. And the interior is all about that softness about finding that space of like comfort. So this was a little too rugged for, for my liking and I, it was there, but it was close. And then I was thinking, okay, maybe I'm gonna make one. And when I was at Daiso, I was so excited to find this glass mug that is exactly perfect. This is like exactly what I want it to be. So I'm gonna make a three-part mold. A lot of times what I would do to alleviate not having to do a three-part mold is just to fill in the bottom. So I'm gonna make this where the bottom is its own little section so that I don't have to deal with undercuts here. And then it'll be the top half and the bottom half with, you know, the bottom section kind of popping off. So I always like to start out by giving myself a visual halfway line and usually cast objects already have a line going so I just retrace that line in sharpie so I can see it better and because this is going to be a three-part mold I'm gonna go ahead and make my division line right here for that bottom part and I'm following along where that base is so again I'm just following along the already cast line that's there this is the great thing about finding Dollar Tree finds or Daiso finds. Things that come from bargain finds or cheap glassware, cheap plastics, they're gonna have these lines inbound for you. So you don't have to worry. You can just kind of re-highlight the lines that's already there. It's because they did not bother to pay somebody to take the time to grind away or sand away those lines because they're just cranking them out so fast, which is great for you if you're making a mold. So in a normal two-part cast mold, the one half of the mold is gonna be made out of clay. In this case, because we're making a three-part mold, I need two parts that are gonna be made out of clay and one part that remain exposed. I'm gonna be butting this up because I want this end to be my sprue. So this will be up against the one board. When I'm doing these kinds of things, I will take maybe some old clay that got too hard. This way I can just cut the whole slab. It's less work for me to do later. So if I can cut an entire chunk, sort of kind of already have something started. And I'm gonna be burying that halfway. So I'm gonna be burying that there. And I need about that much for my butt piece. So this can come off. I'm gonna need more around this piece, I can tell already. I don't have enough on my sides. I've got enough to get started. So one of the first things I do is take my fettling knife and I am going to loosely trace. Just need a rough tracing of where this is gonna land so that I can hollow out this section. 
this is where my loop tool comes in handy. This is exactly the same as if I was making a two-part mold. The only difference is that I'm going to have this extra piece. The process of prepping it is pretty much the same, except I have to imagine that this bottom piece is an extra piece that's going to be there. So I do need to bury half of my handle here, so I want to make sure that I go low enough for all of that action to happen. As I get closer, I want to be checking my things. All right, so now I don't need to hollow out all the sides. It's just going to be hollowing out somewhere towards the center here because it's a tapered piece. Sometimes it's helpful to envision the shape of the piece and you're trying to carve out that piece in the negative. Now I can come back and fill to my line and I also need to fill in. So I don't want a mountain. I want to have my fill be a flat surface, as flat as possible, because if I mountain up, I'm going to have a weirdness happening in the mold. If I'm not meeting my line, I have to pack onto it. You could spend hours sitting here trying to sort out getting this absolutely perfect. Over time, I've come to realize when making many molds, plaster is really forgiving. As long as you get close to perfect with the first part, of when you get the first half of plaster off, you can do a lot of cleanup in the plaster itself. So you don't have to go too, too crazy. You don't want to like be sloppy about it either. You'll just make more work for yourself later in the cleanup. Get it as close as you can, but don't spend like, you know, five hours on doing it. I've done that once. I literally spent like almost an entire day trying to get the plaster part perfect. I was making a shoe mold. And after making that mold, I realized I could do a lot of the cleanup in the soft plaster. Yesterday I was working away on this mold and I had to completely stop what I was doing because I could not find that rubber tool I was looking for. I suspect I took it to campus and I just never brought it back. I stopped what I was doing to go and film another video I had planned to make already, which is how to make your own tools. But I made these two tools, uh, one rubber and one plastic, a wipeout tool is what they call it. It works really well for smoothing your pieces. So back to it, back to this muggin, and let's test out these tools that I made. Yes, yes, this is what I needed. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> it's just the other one. Ooh, this one's nice. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Go check out that tool video, y'all. Go check it out. All right, there's only gonna be so much I can do backwards here. I'm gonna have to, at some point, stop working it on camera so I can flip it around and actually see what the heck I'm doing here. But this tool that I just made makes it so I can get a decent smooth. I also made one by cutting up one of my rubber ribs. Can't tell if I'm going too far below my line because it's in front of me. Look at that smooth, it works so great. Go make your own, y'all, go make your own. Go check out that video. All right, I'm gonna spend time cleaning this up. All right, I'm ready to get the back half on. I'm gonna do the same thing here where I trace. And do a little bit of hollow it out. That's gonna be good, but I'm gonna give myself Good flat surface first. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Smacking it on there. Now I'm going to fix up around my connection and then I'll be ready to get some coddle boards on this thing. All right, I'm gonna put in some keyholes. I just like to use the back of my fettling knife. And I just put them on two diagonals but away from my pattern so I don't end up jacking up any of the work I just did. I could have not put in this big chunk of wedge of clay and started my coddle board close to where the bottom is, but since I'm aiming for a three part, my goal is to cast this chunk of plaster, chop off this bottom chunk, cast the second half, and I'll have the bottom throughout that process. And this is going to probably be a two day situation. I'm not gonna be able to pour, take this apart and pour the other half. If this slab is too thin, I risk it drying out while this plaster section is setting. Time for get these coddle boards on. Sometimes I put in too much clay or I'm tapered here and it's much easier rather than trying to futz with things just to come in and if you're giving yourself enough room, you just chop away. All 
lot of wonk in that one. Wonka wonka. All right, once I get these clamped on, I'm gonna have to go and make sure I have a secure line around the whole thing. And I'm mixing up my plaster. I've got it in my bucket, I'm just stirring it. And I'm gonna be pouring it into that cavity. I have made many videos with working with plaster, my two-part mold video. I just made a slump and hump molds. I will link the hump and slump video and the two-part mold making video in the description of this one. It is going to have to set overnight before I can unmask this thing, flip it over and do the other side. All right, y'all, I am gonna tickle in the back of my throat. I'm not feeling 100%, but I gotta keep things moving because this mold is is where it is. So I'm gonna be taking this apart, flipping this over and doing the larger half, and I'm gonna be leaving the bottom little chunk where the base is. I'm gonna do that last. Whenever you have plaster to plaster contacts, you wanna make sure that you put a good release on it. So I'm probably going to paint a coat of release on it, let it fully dry, come back, and then paint another coat on it before I pour my plaster. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do this like quietly because so I can room keep my throat, you know. I know what I'm saying. All right, so this bottom half is off. I'm done with this stuff. I'm going to save all of this clay and mark this bag with mold making so I don't mess up and accidentally use it because it's all come in contact with plaster. And then this is gonna be the same deal that I did at the bottom half. I'm gonna clean this all up, make sure I have a, a nice smooth surface here, get to my line, and then re-put this in the coddle boards to get it ready for this half of the pour. It's been a minute with this mold. I got sick and it was all I could do just to at least separate the two halves so that it had time to air out and I haven't touched them for probably about a week and a half. So one of the things that I wanted to do is repair this section. I did have an undercut section that got a little messed up where the handle is and this piece got stuck in here. I'm gonna glue it on with some Elmer's glue. I was already feeling the cold coming while I was shooting this video. I did not take enough care when it came to pouring the other half. That cup is stuck in there right now. Which we're gonna have to go in, and do some magic fettle knifing, fettle knife, fettling knife. Ah. Gonna have to do some carving away with my fettle knife, fettling knife, oh my gosh, to get it to release. The only good thing about this happening is that it should be less likely to stick to itself. In this one, my handle is stuck. I have these funky edges, so I'm gonna have to come in, clean up where I can. Now, because this is stuck, I am gonna end up with flashing when I go to pour this. What this means is I have to clear away plaster around this handle. This is gonna create flashing, which is where there's gonna be extra flares of clay all around it that I'll have to clean up after the casting. I'll have to go in with something, fettling knife, and, and carve away the extra parts that don't belong there. I don't wanna go crazy, so I'm just gonna take a little bit and then test it and keep going and testing until I can get it to release. I also want to make sure that it's not stuck somewhere else, that it is just the handle. Yeah, for sure was that handle. So I'm going to have to open this up so that I can make sure I get a decent cast. And looking at it right now, I got to tell you, I'm not happy. There's a lot of weirdness in this plaster. This might have to get recast. So this plaster did not cure the way I would like it to. There's some cracking in it. It's not looking that great. I'm going to still cast the bottom first and then I'm gonna come back and recast this other half. So that way I don't have to have any more dealings with wet clay. I 
If this turns out real terrible, I will be just doing this entire thing all over again. Because, telling you y'all, I was like, not feeling well through half of the time of me making, most of the time I was making this. So, we'll see. I'm not going to put that juju into it. I'm just saying it's the just in case. Just in case this doesn't work out, then I will just start over again. I'm only going to be pouring a little bit of plaster into here. I don't need that much. I'm going to mix up plaster, pour it in here, and then uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, this will be somewhat okay. I've had some issues. I think at this point the plaster is my problem coupled with the fact that it has been super damp and raining and my plaster isn't curing properly but also my plaster was super old and really lumpy so I spent some time sifting all of the plaster. I hope that remedies it. The thing is is if moisture gets into the plaster it can contaminate it and even though it hasn't been used if it has too much moisture in it it won't cure properly which is why I'm getting all of this funkiness that's happening in the mold where it's doing this pulling away the same happened with this bottom piece so I am really hoping the sifting that I did will get me there let's say you want to make an additional set of molds I already have my three pieces right but we popped this piece out so that I could recast this section. This could be done if you just want to make an extra mold. If this other half was really perfect and I was happy with it, I could work in reverse and recast a second set so I end up with a full second set of a mold by going through the process in reverse. So now I have this opening, I'll cast this second half, I could then flip this over, cast another bottom piece, and I'd end up with a second duplicate mold of the whole thing. In this case, I don't need too many of these mugs for the sake of the dragon. I'd like to have, you know, maybe four of them. The dragon is meant to be an intimate setting. I imagine there only could be two or three people in it at a time to play games. I don't need that many mugs. So I'm going to mix up some plaster and get it poured in here the same way I have been doing, but this time with my sifted plaster and hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, Mercury is in retrograde. Uh, but let's not put that energy into it. We're going to have a good cast. I always tell my students that if you have a rainy day or damp weather and a lot of moisture in the air that you should always throw in some extra plaster just to help with cure time. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Add in a bit extra. All right, y'all, here's hoping. I cast a tester because I wanted to check how bad the mold was. And honestly, this is not something I can't handle. There is a little bit of flashing, but fortunately the flashing is on the surface. It's up. I don't have any divoting. The flashing is a good thing because I can clean off the flashing more than I'd like, but it is what it is. For my needs, it is not worth my time loss of me trying to remake these molds. I got to get moving. I'm like feeling incredibly behind in terms of getting all of this stuff done. As much as I'm like, oh yay, we're doing these one-off projects. The main issue is that these one-off projects, they take a lot of time themselves. Like it took me three weeks to make the fabric bint and I release videos weekly. Y'all would not be getting content that readily if I don't pick up the pace. So I don't have time to sit around waiting for months to make a new mold. This is February. These are just now dry enough for me to use a slip cast pour mold and I made them in the early part of December so I don't have that kind of time I gotta move forward so I'm gonna just go ahead and let the mold be a bad mold and do my cleanup in the casting I really wish I had more time to remake this mold but it is what it is it is what it is I like to use strap clamps. I keep telling myself I'm gonna get around to cutting these straps down to make it a little easier for pouring, but I'm kinda glad I didn't because I didn't have enough to do my boxes or enough of my wood ones. I'm glad I didn't. I'm missing a couple. I think I left them on campus to do pours there. And I, this one needs two strap clamps and I have to use a woodworking one on the other side, which I don't exactly like, but it is what it is. Oh. I got a bucket of Cone 5 B-Mix slip on the floor here. I'm using my pitcher. I'm just giving it a little stir. There were a lot of chunks in the 5 star. This was a low fire white. This one is going to be a Cone 5, so this was a low fire 05. My slip was not clean, so I had a bunch of chunks that happened in there. So if you're casting open mugs like this, you definitely want to make sure your slip has been 
screened and free of any bits of muddy type things that may happen. Muddy type things. Chunks, chunks. You want to get rid of the chunks. Here we go. Fill her up. Alrighty, I'm gonna set this out in the sun. Hopefully this plaster will absorb some of this clay. I might have to top it off. And then once I get a thick enough sidewall, I'm gonna pour this out and let it dry and then we will open it up and see what happens. I've done some cleanup. The mold's not perfect, but since I only need four of these, I'm just gonna live with it. I'm gonna do the rest of these casts off camera just because I don't wanna have to deal with transportation. So I think I'm just gonna take my mold and the slip onto campus. There's so much downtime in between while you're waiting for a mold to set up. This is something perfect for me to do in between things. And then I'm close by to the kiln, so I don't have to worry about having to transport back and forth. So yeah, until we meet again. All right, y'all, the mugs have made it back and I just put a very simple clear coat on top of them. These are ready to go and get loaded into the dragon. Let's do this. No, all that sawdust on the bottom. I don't know, you think I need one of those mug trees that people put in their house, you know, in the corner? Then you hang all of them onto a tree. Maybe, huh? Should make a mug tree. Well, it's in, it's in, it's in. It's coming together, my goodness. This stuff, I think, let's see. Let's see, let's see what we got. To me, it's looking like we're just about there in terms of the food items. Don't you think, don't you think? I mean, in terms of the food service where we got mugs, we've got some serving platters, we've got some plates, utensils. Um, yeah, I think it's time to move on to start making some of the games, the games that are going to come into this space. All right, I'm going to call this one here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already. Stick around to watch some awesome new projects coming your way. And remember, don't wake the dragon.